What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi and this is a long overdue video. The continuation of the tuner battle on a Mark 8 GTI. We're switching over to hardware now and we're gonna be comparing intercoolers in today's video. Today's video would not be possible without the huge, gigantic help from Dale's Automotive Service and Stratified Automotive Controls, which we are here right now. Today we're gonna be using their Mark 8 GTI. I have since got rid of my Mark 8 GTI and got into something new, so we don't have my car to test on anymore, but that's not going to stop me from getting stuff done. They're gonna be using their dyno, which is a Mustang all-wheel drive dyno, just like they have at Racing Greed, the company in which I would normally do all my dyno testing. So a similar dyno, we're gonna be showing uncorrected numbers, we're gonna be showing a very low smoothing level, so very, very comparable, but but we're going to be using the help of Dale's automotive technician. He's gonna be here to take the clip off the front of the car and to do the swapping of intercoolers. Stratified is focused mainly on tuning vehicles. They do also do some hardware work, but in today's video, we're gonna be showcasing their E40 tune, a stage one level E40 tune on their Mark 8 GTI to be able to compare these intercoolers. Without these two companies' help, today would not have been possible. Thank you both so very much. So you guys know that this is not my car. I already mentioned that it is Stratified's car. We also have Ryan here from Dale's. He's gonna be the tech that's gonna be working on it, but I did want to mention the couple differences with this car in terms of aftermarket performance parts, whereas my car was completely stock. So while Ryan gets to it, I'm just gonna let you guys know, there's a CTS turbo air intake system installed on this, and there's also a Cobb catback exhaust installed. So it's gonna sound quite a bit better than my Mark 8 did on the dyno at Racing Greed. So now to find out the intercoolers that we're gonna be using today. So what I did is I invited the exact same companies that participated in my tuning battle that make intercoolers to participate in this competition as well or comparison as well. I put it out there and the companies that were on board with it is 034 and APR. Now 034 doesn't make their intercooler, they work with Wagner Tuning. So I have a Wagner Tuning intercooler, APR sent me their intercooler and then CTS Turbo also wanted it on the action. Now CTS Turbo is a local company to me here in Vancouver, BC, Canada. Now they were not a part of the tuning competition, but what I did in exchange is they allowed me to use their flow bench. Now we are here today to test the intercoolers on the dyno, which is probably the best way we can compare these intercoolers. But I also wanted to get you guys some testing on a flow bench, which is exactly what CTS Turbo had. So the first intercooler on the flow bench at CTS Turbo was none other than the stock intercooler. It tested at 208 CFM at roughly 31 and a half degrees Celsius. For the second intercooler to hit the flow bench was CTS Turbo's offering. Theirs managed a total CFM of 212 at a slightly higher temperature of 34 degrees. We tossed on APR's offering for the third intercooler to hit the flow bench. We noticed a serious gain in CFM jumping up to 234 at roughly 34 and a half degrees Celsius. And the final intercooler we set up on the flow bench was Wagner Tuning, offering a massive 273 CFM for the highest rating of the day at roughly 32 degrees Celsius. And here we are guys, strapped down on the dyno here at Stratified. Now this may look a little weird, a little unorthodox if you will, and I can already sense the haters getting ready on their keyboards to start saying, what are you doing you moron? This is not real world testing. Sorry to break it to you guys, this is the best we can come up with. 
And what we've done is we've removed everything off the front of the car. But what we've done is we've left this open because to make it a bit easier on ourselves, we're gonna have Ryan from Dales swap the intercoolers. We're gonna do multiple runs. We're gonna log the intake air temps as we do those runs. Then we're gonna take off the intercooler, put on another one, put on the new charge pipes, put it all back together and run again. Because realistically, there's no way in hell we would be able to do this all in one day if we were to put it all back together every single time. So this is what you're getting, guys. It's gonna remain the same for each of the intercoolers, including the stock one, which we have installed right now. And now a bit about the dyno. Again, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, but I'll mention it again. We are using a Mustang all-wheel drive dyno for this video, just like we would at Racing Greed, but this one is just slightly different. We will be using a dyno jet calibration, just like we do at Racing Greed as well, because I wanna give you guys as close as I possibly can to what you would see on a dyno jet across North America, as you would here, so we're doing that. I want you guys to know it's very cool today. It's freaking cold, I can see my own breath. The DA is very low. I wanna say it's about negative 1300 right now. So I expect the car to make a decent amount of power on this stratified E40 stage one tune paired with that CTS turbo intake as well as the Cobb catback exhaust. Now I'm gonna show you the cooling that we've set up for today. So not only were we excited to work with Stratified because of their awesome software for today's video, we also wanted to show their very cool dyno facility and their additional cooling. This is one of the reasons why we decided to come here. It still isn't a massive, massive turbine or anything like that, but it is enough additional fans that we're going to have more airflow over the car. Now in a real world, you would be doing these as fourth gear poles on the road, which has a lot more air you might have 200 kilometer an hour wind blowing through the car. We don't have that. So we do need some additional airflow and that is what we're gonna have today here at Stratified. All right guys, the time is now. We got the hood closed to get a bit of heat in there. We got all the fans ready to rock and roll. This is the OEM intercooler and what we're gonna be doing to put these things to the test is we're gonna be doing three, yes, three runs back to back to back. And I'm gonna be logging the intake air temps of every single run. So we're gonna be able to see how low it drops to how high it gets for every single pull, one after another. And at the end of each of these pulls, or not each of these pulls, after the three pulls, I will be going over the data log with you guys to show you just how efficient these intercoolers really are. Let's get to it. Time for our baseline using the stock intercooler. After the first run, we saw 48 degrees for a peak intake air temp. After the second run, we saw a peak reading of 55 degrees for the intake air temp. And finally, we saw a massive 63 degrees Celsius for the peak intake air temp after three back-to-back -back runs. Now that we've seen what the OEM intercooler can do, we're gonna start having some fun, guys. What we have is the charge pipes from each of the companies as well as the intercoolers. Now, I just wanted to make you guys aware, when you buy the Wagner intercooler, it comes with the charge pipes. When you buy the APR intercooler, you have to buy their charge pipes separately. And finally, the CTS turbo charge pipes also come with their intercooler as well. So just a bit of an extra expense for the charge pipes from APR, but I wanted it to be an apples to apples comparison. So I made sure that they all have their own set of charge pipes. Now I've randomly put it together and I've decided that APR is gonna go first because theirs looks a little different. <laughs> this one and that one are black. This one's chrome, no other reason. I don't really care. It's just gonna be a have fun day. No particular order. Gonna toss on the APR intercooler with their charge pipes and see what it can do. So now it's time for the changeover. Ryan's back at it from Dales. I just wanted to give a bit more credit where credit is due. Dales has been a big part of this channel for some time now. They provided all of the performance alignments for my RS3, for my Mark 8 when I had it, for my B9 when I had it, for my B8 when I had it. All of them. And now we have a tech lending us a hand here at Stratified, getting this done as seamly as possible, swapping it all over without having to drain all the coolant out of it, making these subtle changes to get this OEM intercooler exchanged for the APR intercooler. And then as we go, he'll be doing them one at a time to make this all go 
perfectly. Thanks again, Ryan. Appreciate your time, dude. No worries. So while Ryan is installing the APR intercooler for the first switchover, I thought I'd bring the OEM intercooler and put it beside the Wagner. Now, as you guys saw when I showed you guys the measurements of each of these intercoolers during the flow testing, I put this beside the slightly larger Wagner compared to the OEM, and you can see just how different the thickness of the intercooler is. If Marcus wants to make his way to the front, you can totally see how it's roughly the same size from this side. But when you looked at it from the top just previously, you can see just how much thicker it really is with an aftermarket intercooler compared to the OEM intercooler. Time for the results from the APR intercooler. After the first pull, we saw 16 degrees for a peak intake air temp, significantly cooler than what we saw with the stock intercooler. After the second run, we saw a peak of 23 degrees for the intake air temp. There was a little bit of an issue here before he did the next pull. This is a little bit of a difference between the other sets that we did, but I'm just being transparent with you all. The final pull we managed 25 degrees for a peak intake air temp, substantially better than stock. Okay guys, time for intercooler number two. We're gonna go with the Wagner now. I just wanted to point out the fact that yes, again, I already mentioned the charge pipes come with it, but they're the only one out of the three companies that has a bag of extra parts to mount this properly. So I'm not sure why they do, maybe it'll fit a bit better, but I just wanted to let you guys know there is this additional hardware that comes with the Wagner, whereas the CTS Turbo and the APR don't require that to fit. Well, we have Ryan here. He just finished installing the Wagner intercooler and he came across something that was quite interesting. So I wanted him to tell you guys rather than hearing it from me. Yeah, the, uh, the APR intercooler is actually a lot easier to install. Okay. Just the, it was a lot smaller and the, the slots for the radiator, the radiator slides in a lot easier than the uh, the Wagner? Yeah. Okay. It was, so Wagner being slightly bigger, it was yeah. harder to install. Not too bad, but it was definitely a little more difficult. Fair enough. Good info for you guys though. I'm not doing the tough work here. Ryan is making it look a lot easier than it really is. Thanks a lot, Ryan. No Now time for the results for the Wagner tuning intercooler. After the first pull, we saw a peak intake air temp of 18 degrees, which was just ever so slightly higher than APR. After the second pull, we saw a peak reading of 23 degrees, which was exactly the same as APR. And for the last pull of the day with the Wagner tuning intercooler, we saw 28 degrees, for peak intake air temps, which was just ever so slightly higher than APR's results. And last but not least, guys, the CTS Turbo Intercooler and Charge Bite Package. Another sexy black one. Thank you very much to CTS Turbo again for letting us use their flow bench. You guys are freaking awesome. And thank you for providing this for us to test. Let's see how CTS Turbos does. For the final data log of the day, we have CTS Turbo's results. After their first pull, they managed 17 degrees for a peak intake air temp. This fell right in between APR and Wagner's results. After the second pull, they managed a 24 degree peak intake air temp, which is one degree higher than we saw with APR and Wagner. As for the final result, it was the highest of the day, 30 degrees peak intake air temp on CTS Turbo's final pull. You guys have seen all of the intercoolers in action. You've seen all of their intake air temps from lowest to highest. Now I'm gonna show you what stratified automotive control is able to produce in terms of wheel horsepower and wheel torque on their Mustang Dyno. Now, as I've previously mentioned, these are Dyno Jet calibrated numbers to kind of give you guys a better feel because Mustangs tend to read a bit lower. But what we have here is the results of the cleanest run of the day. We managed 363 wheel horsepower and 417 wheel torque, a wonderful looking graph and a lot of power out of this Mark 8 GTI.
Now I know some of you guys might be a little disappointed because I didn't show the differences between the wheel horsepower and the wheel torque from one intercooler to the other. I only shared with you the intake air temps. The reason for that is it was extremely freaking cool today. Very low temps and extremely low density altitudes. If you were to have done this test in the heat, in the warmth, in the middle of the summer, it would have made a much larger difference in terms of power. But what we saw was anywhere from only three to five wheel horsepower and three to five wheel torque losses and gains between. Not really enough definitive evidence to say which one made more power from one run to the next. So we showed you guys the peak figures because we really wanted to base this off of their thermal efficiency in terms of intake air temps and not what you were able to see in terms of power on the dyno. There you have it guys, all wrapped up. The Mark 8 GTI intercooler comparison shot done and over with. I hope you guys really appreciate this content. I love making it. A massive thank you again to Dale's Auto Service as well as Stratified for hosting us here today on their awesome dyno and their wicked Mark 8 GTI. And just when you thought we were done with our hardware comparisons, we're gonna be bringing you more. We are going to be doing an air intake system comparison as well on the Mark 8 GTI. Not sure when it'll be out, but it definitely won't be as long a wait as you waited for this hardware comparison versus what you had when you were comparing software originally for that tuner battle. Stay tuned to the channel, guys, for a whole bunch more. Thank you so very, very much for watching, and until next time, take care.